everyone, it's Bobby from Dig Coding here and this is the first video in the Building User App in Django 3.2 playlist. So if you've just now stumbled across Dig Coding, then don't forget to subscribe, click the little bell and be notified every time we add a video to this channel. We put out videos about three or four times a week, all about coding, they're like Django tutorials and hopefully these videos will help you in the projects that you're working on. So please subscribe, like, share the content, and also add a comment because I like some feedback. Also, if you've um, got deep pockets and feeling generous and want to support Decoding, then there's a link to our Patreon page in the description below. So I added a video the other day, link to which is up here, and I was introducing this playlist. So I was talking about that we we're extending uh, another playlist that we built some time ago, which was building the Did Demo website and I promised at the end of that playlist that I'll be building out more features as time goes on. This is the first app that we're building and it's a user app, so it'll allow our users to sign up, sign in, change passwords, verify emails, visit an account, and also set up two-step verification. So lots of fancy pants stuff that we're doing. Let's jump into it. So if you look at my screen, uh, you'll see it opens up on a CMD. So in this video, I'll be just setting up the project. So we'll create a virtual environment, then we'll install Django, we'll install a few other libraries as well. Then we'll, we might set up the settings.py file, the URL conf as well. So we just this is all about setup, right? So, um, but it's important that we get it right. So to start off with, we need to create a virtual environment. So MK virtual ENV, and we'll call this DD user. What I'll do, uh, I've got my machine set up in a way so if I use that command MK virtual UV, it creates a virtual environment independent of all the other ones that uh, I can use for this particular project. So it's you can see here that it has created a virtual environment and activated it as well. So the fact I've got DD user in brackets here means that the virtual environment is working. I can deactivate it. Will that work? Yeah, deactivate, there you go. And then what you do is you go work on DD user and that will activate it again. Okay, so that's how I've got it set up on my local machine. So now what we want to do is we want to um, we want to install Django into that virtual environment. So I, I have to do this every time I set a new project up because Django always gets installed in the virtual environment as for each project that we create. So let's go pip install and if all we put is Django that will install the most recent version. So I think it's probably 3.2.3 .3. Um, so in previous videos it's been 3.2 or 3.2.2 so just keep it as Django that'd be the most recent version but I do know we also need Django uh, decouple and we'll also need um, psycho pg2 psycho psy copg2 is that right yeah that looks right Okay, they're the three libraries that we need straight away. We will obviously be installing other libraries, but at these early stages, we just need these. So uh, hold the phone caller whilst this is all installing. So normally when you install Django, it, it will sometimes say that it wants you to upgrade pip. Um, so you can do that straight away. So just copy the command that it comes up with there's always a more recent version of pip. It's always important to have the most recent version. So that's that. The next command is, so we now installed Django into our uh, virtual environment. So now we are able to start a Django project because we've got Django installed. So what we do is we go Django dash admin start project and then we call it dd underscore user oh don't worry if you get a typo here i've done it 101 times before so you write call a virtual environment one thing and a project another or vice versa it doesn't really matter you can always change it later so dd user and um, what will that will do it will then it will then create directories on your local machine and uh, set up a django project with the correct um directories that allow you to then build on to create the project itself. So what we'll now do is we will CD into DD user and we will, I'll move my mouse so you can see it. And then what we want to do is we want to create a requirements.txt file straight off the bat. 
what that will do is we will pip freeze to that file. So we'll create the file with the same command and that will have a list of all of the libraries that we're going to be using for this project, which is very helpful when it comes to uh, deploying the project on a live production server. So we want to go pip freeze and then go requirements.txt. There we have it. Right, okay, and now that we've done that, we can close CMD down, and you can see now that the directory has all been configured. So I'm now in uh, my development directory, and then I'm in DD user, you can see it's got the main DD user directory, it's then got a manage.py file, and it's then got the requirements. So if I open the uh, my Sublime text, so there we go, Sublime Text. I can now see, this is the directory that we just created, right? So it's DD user, then we've got DD user directory, we've got a manage.py and a requirements.txt. So this is the file, requirements.txt is the file that we just created by cre uh, using the command pip uh, freeze and then adding it to requirements.txt. And you can see from this file that we've, um, just by installing Django and Django decouple and um, Psycho PG, it actually installs a few other libraries because those libraries will have dependencies for them to work properly. So for Django, whenever you install Django, it will be bringing in PYTZ, uh, SQL part, and this type in extensions. So don't worry about that. They, they need to be there for Django to operate correctly. And you can see here, it, the most recent version is Django 3.2.4. So that's the version we're using in this project. So let's open up settings.py. So straight underneath uh, from pathlib import path, uh, we want to import OS, operating system. And then we want to from decouple, so Django decouple library, import config. So I normally in, uh, bring this into the projects that I put on GitHub. It allows you to remove sensitive information from a Django project. Uh, and store it outside of the project. It just makes everything a lot safer, a lot more secure, should I say. Let me move this over a little bit. So the first thing I normally do is I open up a new file and I save this, save as, and I will call this, and I'll save it outside of DD user next to the manage.py file, and we'll call this settings.ini. And at the top we want uh, the equivalent of a list with settings inside it. That's what, um, that's the syntax that's required for Django decouple. And then we want secret key. Yeah, that's right, equals. And then in there as a variable, we want to store the secret key from the project. It's not the end of the world if you didn't do this in uh, development, but you should really do this in production. Uh, you must keep your production secret key secret it's um it's very important so what we need to make sure is that if this secret key has got a um, percentage symbol in it that we need to have actually have a second one next to it uh, we look good to go so we'll save that and in a settings.py file we now change the secret key to config and then a string secret key there we go happy days uh, what do we need to do? Okay, before we crack on, let's go back into our CMD. And we will, because we're now in the DD user directory, we now have access to manage.py file. So we can call the, we can go Python, move my manage.py, and there's, oh, .py, and now we can go um, start app. I can't type for start app if you watch my videos you'll know that my typing is terrible so bear with me start app and we will call this users okay and you should now be able to see just by starting that app there that we've now got this uh, directory called users and it comes with all the admin apps models tests and views and also a migrations directory as well so when you put um, python manage.py start app that is what is essentially doing is creating it but what we then need to do is we need to add that app to the installed apps, otherwise it will be ignored from the project. So let's go users. Now you can put, um, in previous Django versions, you have to put 
uh, users dot is it uh, app config I believe but if you go in here now was it admin oh no it's just called named users so that's actually changed it used to be called something else in there you used to have to reference it differently uh, but no now you can just reference users and that is all that you need to do we won't do anything with middleware just yet we will be changing that because there's things like uh, maintenance mode Django maintenance mode that we'll be installing but we'll leave it as is for now so when it comes to databases, if you remember from the playlist above, we built did demo.com with two databases, a user's database and a main, uh, a main database. So the user's, da user's database was used for all authentication and things like that. And the main database was used for media. So that means that we now need to make sure that in this app, we are migrating to the correct database. So what we will do, we will add, I won't type it, I'll just copy it across from the other project that I've got. We need to change that uh, database dictionary to this. So the name of the database is called did demo user and that's what it is called on the um, production server as well. Um, the engine uh, is the same. If we're using Postgres, that's what you use as the engine anyway. The user is Postgres. And the password, see, I haven't put it in there yet, but in the settings.ini file, I will have a variable in here called um, database password, which I'll add um, whilst I'm not recording. Host is localhost, and the port, because I'm using Postgres 13, is 5433. If I was using Postgres 12, it would be 5432. So that is the database settings done. I always change the language code to GB. Um, and then it comes to the static URLs. I won't type it, uh, I'll just copy it across. But we need, because we're bringing in um, static files such as JavaScript, CSS, logos, and things like that, we need to set up static files correctly. So, um, what I'll do is I'll just copy it across from my other screen here. Um, but we need a static files DERS, um, and we need a static URL and a static group, but we also need it for media as well. So this is the configuration that I use in my projects. So with os.path join, we're using the base directory and we're calling it static in the static files does. Do the same for media, static URL, media URL, and we have the static root and media root. So that is how I configure my projects, okay? Um, and if you go, when you move this to a production server, you have to just change how media root is handled. But I've gone through that in the previous playlist and I'll go through it in more detail in this playlist. So that's about it for settings.py for now we will be adding some more bits and pieces as the, the playlist goes on and we create more videos so we'll be adding things like maintenance mode we'll be adding all auth there's a few libraries that we need um, but essentially that's it for today's one uh, we will now go into urls.py and we just wire all of this up I'll just save settings.py first and I'll also add a setting quickly there we go so all we need to do now is wire some bits and pieces up into urls.py and that will be the end of this tutorial. Um, so straight out of the box, this is what Django looks like. It has the admin page all wired in as default and it brings in path and admin from up here. Um, we need a few extra bits. So we need include from Django URL. Uh, we need from django.conf import settings. That is because we need to reference settings for the static file setting here. So uh, if um, debug is true, then we need to do something with the um, URLs. And then we also need to bring in static from, let's see if I can remember this, django.conf.urls.static import static. I always forget that. Uh, it'd probably be wrong. And right, so now what we need to do is if settings dot, uh, no, yeah, debug, then, so if that settings dot debug is true, uh, we need to go uh, URL patterns static, and we need settings dot uh, static URL and document root equals, and this is settings dot static root. 
that looks about right. I've probably got a typo in there that you've probably noticed, but I can't see it. Copy, and then we will do it again, and we will change static to media. And change that one to media, and that should be it. And before I end the video, let me just run the server. I won't make migrations just yet, but if I run the server, that should tell me if I've buggered anything up. So Python manage dot py run server. Is it going to like it? If settings a dot debug, so uh, setting, there you go. So if settings, and then hopefully just by saving that, it should reboot. Yeah, there you go. So just to recap on this video, what we've done is we have set up a virtual environment, we have started a new project, we've started an app called Users, and we've wired it all into the settings.py file and the URL comp file. That's all we've done. But it's a decent piece of work. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. In the next video, we'll start doing things like URLs, we'll start, be built, we'll start building the views.py file, and uh, it depends how long that takes. We might also start doing things like uh, signals. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Again, like I said at the start of the video, if this is the first time you've come across Dib Coding, then please subscribe, please like, and share the content as it's a massive help. That is it. Thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.